Honorable Rector of Bologna University, dear Professor Chirinia, dear friends, I decided to speak about something that I was thinking for years and make a small uh, introduction or a presentation here which will be uh, titled Introducing a Quantum World. Well, this is not a scientific seminar, although if there are physicists or politicians here, I expect they can argue with me. Am I right or wrong? But I hope one day I'll be able to come back here to really have a scientific seminar and to present the theory with formulas and everything and have a debate, a heavy debate with fellow scientists. But this is just an introduction. And in fact, it's an introduction of a book that we just uh, finished. And this is the introduction of a book that we just finished. And I say we because I, we wrote together with my son. So in this new quantum world, we wrote a book which is named The Quantum World. And I called it Introducing a Quantum World. And I'm going to read it. I thought maybe because it's connected with this very important event, in my life, I should not leave it for free flow of words, but rather write something that I can then leave with you as a small paper, not a scientific one, this one, but I can send you later a scientific one as well. So it's called Introducing a Quantum World. Dear friends, the new world order is taking shape today but not in the way they, uh, that we all think. Many geopolitical events are taking place to catalyze the repositioning of the chess pieces on the chessboard of geopolitics today. The U.S. strategic shift to focus on Asia Pacific, compounded by their gradual decline of their soft power since the consequences of 9-11, the continued uncertainty and indecision of the European Union as it searches for its most efficient structure and geopolitical future, coupled with fragmented values across its member states. Russia's strategy to consolidate and restore its historic influence globally, which it lost after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The China's rapid expansion and influence across all corners and industries of the globe. Consequently, the international system previously dominated by United States for the last three decades is encountering the rise of the so-called middle powers, such as India, Turkey, Iran, Brazil, and others. These changes are provoking largely dormant regional conflicts to spark again and establishing a new era of conflict in trade, cyber technology, and creating more instability in the international rule-based system that was created after the Second World War. And unfortunately, unfortunately, one of these conflicts, one of the recent conflicts with dramatic and tragic consequences was a conflict between my country and our neighbor, Azerbaijan. Yet at the same time, as a smaller, quieter, but more dramatic change has been taking place since the beginning of the century. The world has become hyper-connected through the internet and smart devices. Technology is evolving at rapid pace, far beyond any regulation or any state oversight. It's much quicker than any state is managing that. Information has become overabundant to the point where a fact and fiction have become purely subjective. And the way that humans are interacting and engaging with each other has become completely new. Our institutions and the state, or the states, have become completely different to the previous century. What does this all mean? This fast-changing political and social landscape is something humans have now 
not experienced before. It is the harbinger of a new era, an era of quantum politics. How do these two very distinct concepts of politics and quantum theory overlap with each other? To explain where our world and international system is heading today. In the early 2000s, it became clear that the world was not only becoming more globalized and connected, it also becomes more sensitive, whereby small localized events were gaining increasingly asymmetric outcomes due to the changing and the changing ways of changes and changing ways of how business, politics, social construct were interacting. In some cases, they were merging with each other, business, politics, entertainment. And in other cases, they were merging not only with each other, but they were creating together some new areas, merging also with other fields, such as entertainment and gaming. Well, I think it's not a secret if we look at our current political landscape worldwide, you'll find a lot of politicians that basically are strong entertainers, and they in fact came from entertaining. And a big part of politics and political debate has become daily entertainment as well. So people are waiting daily episode from a series number 2021. This was because people did not anticipate the nature's quantum power and how it shaped the rapid evolution of technology and how such technologies would come to not only dominate our lives but also shape how we behave as individuals as well as groups of individuals or bigger groups like states and others. I began speaking about this phenomena in early 2000s at the World Economic Forum and other platforms as something that I termed then quantum politics. To explain how politics and politicians will no longer behave or be as before, as they have been in the past and the same will happen not only to them but also the businesses and other activities of humans. At the beginning of each talk, I would make a sure, I would make sure that the audience would understand what the term quantum politics or the term quantum world means. It doesn't mean that the laws of quantum physics or mechanics, quantum mechanics, should be directly applied to politics, to people or society, but rather it would mean that it is the most relevant metaphor to discuss this new state of politics and the new state of this world. It does not indicate that a politician has the same properties as an elementary particle. But it does explain how our concepts and relationships have drastically changed because of how we interact, communicate with each other, and with our institutions. Therefore, the term quantum used here should be read both as a metaphor and as an actual change taking place in our real life. The intention here is not to compare, prescribe, or enforce the laws of quantum physics and mechanics to politics or other aspects of our lives, but to use such frameworks, practicalities, and metaphorical ways to make our increasingly complex and unpredictable world a little bit making more sense. We are rapidly evolving from using only classical mechanics for centuries to using more and more and more quantum mechanics as the basis of our new technologies, communication systems, and the ways of interaction as a global species. Yet, it wasn't until 2020 pandemic that forced us to change our own frameworks, whether we wanted it to do or not, how we behave, how we live, how we have 
to design our institutions. The pandemic, the COVID-19-19, has forced us to rethink how we live. And a lot of politicians, scientists, are speaking about the new era that the pandemic has, has started. The way I do believe that pandemic is not the reason. Pandemic is just a consequence of the changed world. Because if it would have happened 30, 40 years ago, it would never have the same scale, drama, or tragedy as before. It has the same scale and, and drama and tragedy because the world has changed dramatically. Crises are always an opportunity as well. An opportunity to see the world differently and make big changes which we have been impossible before the crisis. So it forces us to rethink. Well, that, we go 100 years back, there was a crisis in physics, because there were events that, would, that was not possible to explain through classical mechanics of great Isaac Newton and others. That crisis in physics forced the scientists to rethink about the logic, common sense, and create new ones, which looked absurd at the beginning. Then, when then taken and absorbed, it made and created the new world of quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Crises, as I said, are always an opportunity to see the world differently. To commence our journey using these new concepts of quantum politics and quantum world, we must start with a simple observation. And the observation is this one, one of them. The human race has always been a species evolving at a non-natural pace. What do I mean here? The technologies we created are a part of our evolutionary story. So we have our evolution, but we also create technologies that are becoming a part of our, our evolution and influencing our evolution, and are increasingly shaping who we are and who we will be become tomorrow. The simple truth, a very unique characteristic of, our hum of humans, both causes and solves many of the global issues we face today and will do so in the future. So we cannot ignore or take that there are two parallel, parallel evolutions. The one is the evolution of technology and the evolution of humans. The technology we create has huge impact on our evolution as well and the other way around as well. It also begs an important question. Who exactly have we become? How have the things we have created shaped not just our lifestyle, but also our core properties as human race. These qualities are entrenched across many generations through our institutions, traditions, dictating how we learn at the universities, how we work, how we govern, and how we treat each other on personal level, on group level, institutional level, national level. In other words, it shapes our education, economy, society, and politics. To explain more than you can imagine at first how we have achieved so much progress in the last 200 years, but also why we feel like we have more problems today than ever before. This is the feeling that a lot of us live with. It has shaped how and what we have learned for generations, how we have interacted from tribes to nations, from nations to states, and as well as how our social priorities have been changing to define what is acceptable and what is not. It also answers many of other questions Questions we are all asking ourselves and each other every day. Why does it feel like we are jumping from one crisis to the next one 
without moments to breathe? Why do crises relentlessly overlap each other more than ever before? Why does everything seem to be happening at an accelerated pace and at unexpected moments? Why is it so hard to plan anything beyond one year in our life or in our business? Why are politicians so unreliable and becoming more extreme or sometimes more populist? And why are we having more division in our societies than ever before, even in, if the basic needs of our lives have dramatically improved? But we still think that the societies are becoming polarized. The questions have always been more important than the answers, as each answer is the path to a new question. So the most important thing is to ask a question and then think about the answer. Can a better understanding of the world as being quantum help us improve our lives further or solve today's complex problems more effectively? How can we improve ourselves our institutions and our perspectives to understand the roots of many problems once and for all? How can we identify these quantum phenomena taking place all around us that are hugely beneficial and multiply them across other aspects of our lives to derive even more benefits? Because we have a lot of benefits from real technology. So we have to understand it better to, to make it much more effective, larger, deeper. We are at the turning point in our history, and if we do not act now, it may become too late to solve these problems or grasp the benefits we are seeking or seeing in front of us. Yet, there is something fundamental holding us back, which could derail our beautiful story of human progress that has taken place over the last two centuries and especially over the last 30 years. Doubtless, through history, this ominous bell has been rung many times, yet never before has the human race been able to connect so efficiently with each other and access a vast global pool of information. This makes today's situation very unique in our history and very critical for making decisions and understandings. Like with all complicated questions, the answer may seem puzzling at first, like the answers of quantum mechanics, like the Schrodinger's formula, but when it is broken down into clear parts, you and me will feel like we knew it all along. So, in the spirit of scientific discovery, let us together start with our enigmatic hypothesis, i.e. our answer, then provide evidence to support its validity and start a path to the new quantum world. Our increasing progress and problems in social, political, economic spheres, locally and globally, stem from the fact that we are living in a world exponentially influenced by the properties of quantum mechanics, technology, whilst our perspectives, institutions, and belief systems are still organized and managed in accordance with classical Newtonian mechanics or classical life. So it's the time of change, the time of questions, and the time of answers. This statement may cause some confusion at first. What does Isaac Newton have to do with the inequality, geopolitics, financial crises of 21st century? Why would quantum mechanics explain why we have more social unrest and increasing populism in in the year of 2021. But most importantly, is this divergence something we really need to worry about? 
The answer is actually far simpler than it first seems and could be explained by simple observations. But that will be a theme of my next lecture. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed.